Alright guys, so now I had a look to those three functions and I checked my projects, real projects, and I found out that there are many use cases for the function row number compared to the other functions, dense rank and rank. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you a few use cases for the rank number that I usually use in my real projects in order for you to understand how important is the row number function. So let's go to SQL. All right, so now let's start with the first use case and we have the task of find the top highest sales for each product. So this is very classic. In reporting or data analysis, we call this top in analysis. So here the managers or decision makers, they would like to have the best performers or the best success in our data. So for example, the top highest five customers or the top five products or categories and so on. So this is very important analysis in order to focus on the best products or on to the most important customers and so on. And this is, as I said, very classic and very important in order to make decisions in the business. So now let's see how we can solve this. So we're going to start with the usual stuff. Let's first select the data. So select order ID. Let's take as well the product ID and the sales from sales orders. So let's go and execute this. And now as we know that for each product we have multiple orders and we have multiple sales, but we are interested only in the highest sales for each product. So we have to go and create a rank. In order to do that, we're gonna use the row function, row number, and we have to define the window now. So do we need partition by? Check the query. So it says for each product, that means we have to divide the data by the product ID. So let's go and use the partition by products ID and now we must use the order by so order by and now how to sort the data by the sales right and it is from the highest to the lowest so let's go sales and we have here descending so from highest to lowest let's go and give it a name so you're going to be rank by products so let's go and execute this and now by looking to the result you can see that SQL did divide the data by the product ID. So we have here like around four windows. The first one over here, you can see that the rank starts from one it's with four. So the highest rank can be the order number eight with the sales of 90. And then it goes to the four. Now, as you can see that the second window, we have a new ranking. So it resets. The first gonna be uh, the order number 10 and the last one gonna be order number two. So as you can see, each window has its own ranking. And as well, the last one, we have it only as one row. So now, of course, in the task, we have to return the highest. So we are not interested in the others. We have to return this row, this row as well, and this one, and this one. So as you can see, we have to return everything that has the rank one. We are not interested in the rank two, three, four, and so on. So we would like to have the highest. So now in order to filter the data, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and use subqueries. So select star from and then we're going to have the following condition. So where, and we're going to say rank by products equals to one. So we are interested only on the rank number one. So let's go and execute it. And with that, since we have four products in our data, we're going to have only four rows and we have the highest sales. So as you can see, we have only number one over here and those sales are the highest for each product. And with that, we have solved the tasks by finding the top N analyzers. Okay, moving on to the next use case, we have the following task and it says, find the lowest two customers based on their total sales. So now we have the exact opposite use case. We call it button in analysis. So now in this example, in the business, the decision makers want to optimize the costs, want to cut costs. And with that, they have to analyze the lowest performers in the product or the lowest performance in the employees in order to cut costs. So now with this analysis, the decision makers are not focusing on the best successful stuff. We are focusing on the lowest stuff, the lowest performers. So now let's solve these tasks. So now if you check the question, we have multiple stuff, right? We have the total sales and as well, we have to find the lowest two customers. So we have ranking and as well aggregations. Remember, we can do stuff together with the group by. So now let's do it step by step. First, let's select the data, right? So what do we need? Order ID customer ID and we need the sales from sales orders. So let's go and execute this. So now if you check the customers over here, we have around four customers and they have multiple sales. 
Now we would like to have the total sales for each customers in order to find the lowest two. So let's start first with the aggregations. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and aggregate the sales. So the sum of sales, let's call it total sales. And now in order to do the group by, we have to have only the customer. So group by, and we have the customer ID. So it is very simple group by statements. Let's go and execute this. So now by checking the result, we can see that SQL did aggregate the data. We have four rows and that's because we have four customers and we have their total sales. So we have solved the first part of the task. We have the total sales for each customers. Now let's move to the second part. It says lowest two customers. That means we have to use the ranking functions in order to rank those customers. So we are not interested in all customers, we are interested only in the lowest two. So in order to do that, now we're going to go and use the window function, row number, so, and then over. Now, do we have to partition the data? Well, no, we don't have to do that. We have now to sort the data, so order by. So this time we're going to go and use the aggregations in the order by, so the sum of sales. And we want to have it sorted from the lowest to the highest. So I'm just going to go and use the default. So it is ascending. Now let's call it rank customers. So that's it. Again here the rule is that if you are using a window function together with a group by function, you have to use only columns that is used in the group by. So this should be working. Let's go and execute it. So now as you can see in the results, we got an extra column for the rank. So now the lowest customer going to be the customer number two. The second one going to be four with the 90 total sales. And the highest customer with the sales is going to be the last one, the 125, customer number three. So now we have almost everything, but the list should contain only the last two. So in order to do that, to filter the data, we're going to go and use subquery. So select star from. And then we have to define the condition where rank customers, it should be smaller or equal to two right so with that we will get the first two so let's go and execute this and with that we got the lowest two customers based on their total sales so customer number id two and the four so that's it we have solved the task and now we have done button in analyzes okay let's keep moving to the next use case and we have the following task it says assign unique ids to the rows of the table orders archive so now guys we might be in a situation where you have a table without any primary key and you would like to create an id for each row so in order to do that we can use the function row number in order to generate unique identifier ids for each row inside our table if we don't have one and generating such id for each row it's very important to do stuff like importing data exporting data maybe joining tables as well using this id or let's say optimizing the performance of query using the id so now let's see how we can generate that using row number okay so now let's first select the table order archives in order to understand the content so select star from sales orders archive so let's go and execute. So now by checking the result, you can see that we have 10 orders and we have repetitions in the order ID over here. So it is not really a primary key. As you can see over here, we have twice the ID four and here we have three times the ID six. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go and generate unique identifier for each row. So in order to do that, what you're going to do, you're going to go over here and say row number. And then we're going to define the window function. We don't partition the data at all, but we have to sort the data by the order ID. So order by order ID, or you can use something else as well using the order date or something. doesn't matter. So let's add to it order date as well. And let's call it unique ID. Let's go and execute this. Now by checking the data, you can see that we have a new ID over here that comes from the row number and we have like a unique identifier. As you can see, we have 10 rows and with that we have as well 10 different distinct unique IDs. So with this, as you can see, we have solved the task and we have now a unique identifier and ID for the table orders archive. So now having this ID, we can do many stuff like joining tables or doing something special and important called 
paginating. Imagine we have like a huge table and we would like to retrieve the data. So now in order to not have all the data in one go, we can go and divide the data by the primary ID or by unique identifier. For example, we can make a page from 1 until 100,000. And then the second page starts from 100k to 200k. So now by dividing the data, we can maybe improve exporting or importing data or we can have faster retrieval for the users. We don't want to have the whole data in one go, in one page. So it has a lot of benefits using paginating and we can do that only if we have a nice ID like this. Alright, so now I'm going to show you the last use case for the function raw number that I usually use in my real projects. So sometimes if you are doing data analysis, you're going to find out that there are data quality issues, especially with the duplicates. So what I usually use, I use the raw number in order to identify the duplicates. Not only that, I can use it in order to delete the duplicates. So we can use it in order to do data cleansing. And this is essential task for each data engineer, not only data analysts, in order to prepare and clean up the data before doing data analysis. So let's have the following task. Identify duplicate rows in the table, orders, archive, and return a clean result without any duplicates. So not only we have to identify the duplicates, we have to return no duplicates in our results. So let's see how we can do this. Let's first select the data. So select star from sales orders archive so let's go and execute so now by looking to the data you can see that we have duplicates we have an issue so the order id number four is twice in our database it doesn't make sense right it should be only one so which one is the correct one if you check the data over here you can see that this order is shipped and then delivered so it looks like the last one is the correct one so how we can do that? If you just scroll to the right, you can see that we have a creation time and we usually use such a timestamp in order to identify what was the last valid like order. And here we can see immediately that this order time is higher than the previous one, which means this is the more up to date, right? The more current. So what we're going to do, we're going to go and rank our data for each order ID and sort the data by the creation time in order to find the last inserted or created row for this order. So let's see how we can do that. What we're going to do, we're going to go over here and say, let's have a row number and then over. And what we're going to do, we're going to partition by the primary key. So partition by order ID. And as we said, we have to order the data by this time step at the end. So partition by or order by creation time. And descending so we want the highest then the lowest so that's it let's call it rn and execute the query so now by checking the data if we, everything is clean and we don't have duplicates everything should be one because maximum for each primary key we should has one row so but you can see over here we have here two and we have here three two so that means this is indicator that we have duplicates inside our data so now by checking one by one as you can see the order id is only one so we have the rank one, the second one as well, we have the rank one, but here we have the issue. So as you can see, we have now two ranks for the order ID four. So now which one is the correct? In our logic, we said it is the last row that is inserted inside our data. And this is rank number one. So if you scroll to the right side, you can see that the creation time here is higher than the second one. So with that, we have identified what we want. We want the last inserted row for each ID. And now let's check this over here. So here we have it three times. So it says the first one is the highest creation date. So if you go to the right side and now by comparing those timestamps, you can see that this record, the first one is the last latest one that is inserted inside our data. So as you can see, this one is the one that we need. The other two, we don't need it because it is old informations. So now everything that doesn't has the rank number one is not valid. It's something old and it's actually bad data quality, so we want to remove it or not to select it. So now in order to have a clean data, what we're going to do, we're going to go and select the following as subselect. So select star from the table. And now we are interested only with the rank number one. We don't need anything else. So let's go and execute. And now if you check the results, you can check the order ID over here. It is unique. We don't have any duplicates, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is no duplicates at all. 
and we have now only the latest inserted data inside the orders and we don't have any duplicates or data quality issue so now of course now we can go with this results in order to do for the analyzers and this is exactly what data engineers usually do clean up the data and prepare the data before doing any data analysis. And of course, if you want to communicate those data quality issues to the source of the data, let's say you are not the owner of those informations, you can generate a list of all bad data quality issues and you can send it to the source system and tell them to clean it up from the sources. So now in order to select the bad data, what we're gonna do is we can just change here the condition and say, if it is higher than one, then you are like bad data. So let's go and execute this. And now with this, we have in the results all records that shouldn't exist in the data in the first place. So we can go and export it and communicate it to the source and tell them, check here, you have something wrong in your system and those informations should not be inserted in the data. So everyone, it is very strong, right? It is very powerful. I use it a lot in my projects. There are many use cases for the raw number function in SQL. We can do it in order to find the top end analyzes, the bottom end analyzes, the best performance, worst performance, and as well, we can assign unique IDs to do paginating, or we can use it in order to discover data quality issues to clean up our data. So it is amazing function in SQL, and you're gonna use it a lot. If you like this video and you want me to create more content like this, I'm gonna really appreciate it if you support the channel by subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all those stuff gonna help the channel with the YouTube algorithm and as well my content gonna reach the others. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.